Oh, hi. Today, I want to talk to you about food. You know, we often take food for granted, but food is not just something we consume to satisfy our hunger. Through food, we strengthen old relationships or create new ones. For example, we have food for different times of the day, for different occasions, or different celebrations. And sometimes, we make food for that special someone just to show that we care. Food is also a medium through which we express our identity. For example, we pass down recipes or have a national dish. And also, food is a creative conversation that, for a brief moment, satisfies that deep black hole within us. Today, we are making chili. It's a simple dish, so you don't really want to sweat it. But you also don't want to fuck this up. As you know, I won some awards and judged some potlucks, but some of these guys don't really respect the pot. You can't just show up with a bunch of peppers and call yourself a gardener. What makes a chili great, it's not some secret recipe. It's the relationship between you and the ingredients. If I'm cutting into an onion and it's not drawing some real sad tears, it's compost. Let's talk tomatoes. You really want something that expresses that disillusion when you throw it. You've got to soak those beans. You've got to soak them for a while. 10 days if you got the water. And finally, the spices. As my abuela used to say, spice is the bright of the tongue. And uh, you don't want to hold back on that because fear is the mind killer. They say the way to someone's heart is through their stomach, but I would go even lower. If you really want to keep them coming back, As I mentioned earlier, food is about relationships. So if you mess this up, you have a pretty high chance of dying alone. If you're not up to the challenge of making a good chili, I suggest cooking by yourself, eating by yourself, and really exploring the emotional landscape of a one bedroom apartment. And one day, maybe one day, someone will cook for you. Mm -hmm.